Hi there. In this lecture, we have a masterclass from Tigran Petrosian. This is his game against Vasmil Hort in 1972. Knight f3 was played by Tigran. We have d5, b3, c5, e3, knight f6, bishop b2. So very hypermodern play by white. c4, knight c6, c takes, e takes, and now bishop e2. Bishop e7, both sides castle, d4. And here, after bishop g4, this might be a mistake. Maybe b6 was actually a little bit better in this position. For example, if uh, knight c3, bishop e6, this seems as though white has a small edge only in this kind of position. But here, clearly, after bishop g4, this looks troublesome to have this isolated queen's pawn. It's not just the blockade square, it's the dark squares generally in black's camp. If we extend the concept, the whole dark square campaign by white is evident from Trojan's play after this. After b take, bishop takes c5, knight c3, rook c8, we see rook c1. And... Here, that bishop's a bit loose. Maybe White's threatening, you know, to expose an attack on it. So the bishop goes to e7. We see knight d4. Bishop takes. And now a reinforced blockade of d4. Very, very comfortable looking. Queen d7, knight f4. But how is this position progressed here? Queen d3. We see knight e4. Now, there is a progression after knight takes c6. It seems dark square weaknesses kind of create other dark square weaknesses. We have this long range bishop because of black's dark square weaknesses. This bishop's got all the way, you know, the focus on g7. And actually, this is something to be borne in mind here. We see rook c2, bishop f8, rook fc1, queen b7, queen e2, with the idea of creating provocation uh, to put pressure on g7. Technically, there's also a micro upside, which maybe Chosen didn't really estimate as part of this. He's not just tempting dark square weaknesses, but there's also interesting tactics emerging just because of the Queen's general placement, which maybe is incidental uh, to what Chosen was thinking here. Queen g4 was played. And there are various ideas of the Queen g4, like knight h5, or potentially, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on g7. So g6 was played, and this creates dark square weaknesses. And maybe, you know, Petrosian was satisfied with this long-range bishop and just wanted to bounce his queen back uh, to d4. This looks like a very interesting idea. It turns out, actually, there's a, an incidental tactic, which, if you're really focused on the tiny little downsides and you keep your tactical hat on, then you'd see these other incidents incidental tactics can you see what the incidental tactic is if i give you five seconds let's pause the video okay it seems as though knight takes d5 because the queen is also looking at c8 so this would have also it seems uh been very very nice for white indeed so anyway queen d1 though white's still in a dominating position bishop d6 uh, if bishop e7, this might be the most stubborn way, but even in this case, just white stands so much better on the dark squares here. It's just a big bear hug of a position. It's at such a positional grip. So, But bishop d6 was played. And in fact, we do have Tigran demonstrating uh, tactics now to kind of exploit the position. So even though he's a, he's a great master of positional play, he's also a fine tactician. Yes, he did miss that tactic because we're not we're not computers. But his tactics are still exceptional behind the scenes. And we see this here. Can you see what white plays in this position? It's really an exceptional little combination. Okay. Knight takes d5 was played. And here, yeah, uh, rook cd8, because if c takes, as an example, rook takes, 
and then rook takes and then queen d4 basically causes black to have to play a move like f6 you know if king f8 we can play the check and pick up the queen for example so f6 and this drops the knight on e4 it's a big advantage for white so uh yeah knight takes d5 interesting tactic and bishop takes h2 doesn't really change the picture white's going to end up uh, picking up a central pawn so we have rook cd8 and now just you know rook takes c6 queen b8 and now f4 rook e6 and then queen d4 and you can see that these dark squares are really quite painful the game actually ended here this is also double attacking g7 h i mean multiple attacks there's also e4 hanging so if f6 uh in fact the game you know, if the game had continued with f6 then in fact actually even stronger than uh anything else Sorry, the knight's not hanging anyway. But the strongest move is queen c4 here. And now there's a big threat of knight takes f6 and queen takes e6, for example. And if here to protect that rook, this is just a dominating position where white can forcibly win material, for example, with knight c7. Uh, it's just an absolutely dominating position. White's going to end up big material up. I'll take you to the game ends. So queen d4. Okay, there's there's a couple of points here, and and there's also a practical point that the great positional players, you know, they're not supercomputers. That they have their positional plans, and sometimes maybe, uh, you know, they're interested in, in provoking weaknesses to kind of exploit them normally. But there are side effects also, you know, tactically on, on other parts of the board, which maybe that they weren't even thinking about. So, you know, Queen G4 did have uh, a nice little tactic earlier. But nevertheless, uh, Chosen still found the same kind of, you know, tactical idea of sacrificing the knight and move 23 because of the weakened uh, dark squares. So I thought uh, it was a very nice game in terms of isolating Black Steeple and overall instructive campaign on the dark squares later to try and weaken the dark squares the principles were good absolutely firm principles which we can use in our own games i believe okay thanks so much hi guys i hope you enjoyed the free sample from my ultimate guide to chess pawn structures where i really enjoyed gaining a lot of insight for myself and sharing with you guys about various different key structures which you should know about isolated pawns backward pawns hanging pawns i even talk about form pawns and this actually has a mammoth 45 plus hours of video content in this course and you can get it at a discount as well with the standard voucher code which is on king crusher tv slash pawns so i hope you do check out this pawn structure course it's given me a lot of confidence though fundamentally what's going on helps with you know getting a template plan quite easily just based on the pawn structure cues of a chess position okay so i do hope you check that out thanks very much